chasing Shine bright deep inside you When will you ever let it shine from within And cast all of your fears aside You'll see Hello and welcome back to Kingdom Reviews. I'm your host, Future Keybearer. Today, we enter the grid. So after we get our first dive boss, which is fine, it's mostly about dodging attacks until the obvious time to strike. Sora lands, and I'm immediately impressed by the use of the enter the grid effect from the movie. It's not as iconic as the one from the original Tron, but don't think I didn't notice. This outfit? Hey, I know where I am. Testament to the film's visual style that even Sora can recognize that this is Tron's world. However, a little less familiar to him is a recognizer, so Sora decides to chase after it. As we give chase, we discover this world's reality shift, Codebreaker. It is by far the most versatile reality shift in the game, as it can do various things to both enemies and the environment. From the classic creating explosions, to actively fighting for you instead of against you. Upon reaching the Recognizer, while Sora is fascinated, the programs running it don't take too kindly to him. Hey! Uh. Isolating for quarantine. Whoa there! That is so unfriendly! Sora, does it look like these assholes care? So Sora runs off, and for the first time in this game, we get enemies that aren't Dream Eaters! I don't know, just based on how this game has been whole hog on them, I'm kinda surprised! Also, I'm realizing that, why is it mostly the live-action worlds that let us fight the minions from the movies? Before Sora can fully escape, he gets stopped by the program Rinsler. Tron. He's alive. Spoilers? Well, to be fair, despite a major sacrifice, it was kind of a footnote in the movie. Anyway, Tronsler's hangover catches up with him, I guess, and he leaves. After which, Sora gets approached by Flynn, Sam, and Korra. So this is like... Tron's world, right? You know Tron? I... uh... Yeah, I've met him. And stuff. He hugged me. It was weird. So naturally, Sora wants to get Tron back to normal. Flynn tells him that Clue, the guy who made Tron into Rinsler, may have Tron's source code lying around, and that should be able to put him back to normal. Great! Thanks, mister! Where are you going? I'm going after Clue. Do you even know where he is? Nope, no idea. To be fair, that's never stopped him before! So Korra, mostly out of fascination, decides to accompany Sora in getting Tron's source code. Are you ready? And once again, I'm disappointed that this game's insistence on using Dream Eaters as party members means that we won't get Korra in the party, despite the setup. Unfortunately, we see that Sora has also piqued Clue's interest. Or at least, his Keyblade has. Anyway, we make our way to Clue's throne ship. It's not here. Yes, I imagine it wouldn't be on this random wall. For that matter, how will you know when you have found it? What does a source code look like? But before they can look elsewhere, Rinsler arrives to put a stop to their snooping. Wait, Cora. Let me talk to Rinsler. A little heart-to-heart -heart might jog his memory. He's a program, Sora. Programs don't have hearts. Hey, now! If he had a heart, he'd probably be very offended by that. But, surprise surprise, Sora tries anyway, and more surprise surprise, it doesn't work. Korra gets knocked out, pretty embarrassingly quite frankly, and the door shuts on them before Sora can help. Did he blow her up? What was that? Tron. Why? That's what we do. Put the most precious uh. memories in the back of our minds where they're safe. Hey Joy, your thoughts? This is for all those memories that belong in the back of the mind. Like this penalty one. It's weighing on her, so let's lighten the load. So yeah, this asshole, along with Xemnas yet again, show up to wax all poetic. Once, my master Ansem found an old system and made a copy of its master control program. Not really. The grid is a different system from the one in the first movie, and if Ansem did get a copy of this one, he got ripped off big. But yeah, the whole point of Xemnas' speech here is that Sora may unknowingly have memories in his heart that are not his. 
Also, the other guy suggests that Sora is not along the path he thought he was on. Which, why are you telling him this? To dip a toe into spoilers a little bit, doesn't cluing him in kind of risk ruining your plans? And then Sora is... suddenly in a battle arena. Yeah, he didn't get pulled out by the wind in the previous scene, he's just... there. Anyway, this is where Sora actually meets Clue, who has a proposition for him. He'll gladly return Rinsler to being Tron if Sora gives him his Keyblade. I... I can't. This is what lights the darkness. A chance to make everyone happy! Uh, that's a nice sentiment, Sora, but why not just pull the same trick that you did with Captain Jack Sparrow? Ah, oh, there you see. You know, if I had a nickel for every time this world made me think of Port Royal, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice. Anyway, not satisfied, Clue Six Rinsler on Sora. He doesn't want to fight back at first, but Korra encourages him, claiming that if he fights, he might be able to jog Tron's memory. Let's go, Tron! And we get probably my favorite boss in the game. Not only is it one of the few Disney bosses, but I just love the concept going into it. Rinsler himself is a decent challenge, and it even utilizes the reverse gravity mechanic that comes straight from the movie. Not to mention, the boss music here is fantastic. After a neat two-part callback to KH2, Clue tries to take out Sora himself, but Rin's... Tron manages to save him, sacrificing himself in the process. God, that bit hits me. But Sora, forever the optimist, believes Tron will be alright before finding the keyhole. Catching up with Riku, he too gets stopped by security, but unlike Sora, he decides to see where this goes. It's here where he meets Sam. Where are we, Sam? We're on the grid. You say that as if that means anything to him. Anyway, Riku is taken to the games where he's to compete in light cycle combat. Gotta say, while the light cycles here aren't bad, it's not as fun as in Cage 2. The one thing this does have is use the light ribbon that the cycles are named after. But I guess someone figured Riku was doing too well as a giant mantis dream eater is sent upon him. Really, it's just more of the same, not too difficult to deal with. Anyway, Riku's had enough of this and blasts his way out, where he runs into Sam again. Sam offers to let Riku come with him to escape the grid. Why? They shared one helicopter ride, and as far as Sam knows, Riku's a program. Riku declines at first, until... Wait, what's the way out? Through the portal. Portal? Yeah, that thing Joshua brought up, and... isn't relevant in any other world. I'm going to discuss this in a later video, but I'm starting to think that the whole portal thing was originally going to be a much bigger deal. And then... Then my dad will be able to come home. For the last time, Sam, he's not getting milk! Anyway, Riku changes his mind, but Sam says first he has to meet with a contact in the city. And no, we don't actually get to see this contact of his. Which, honestly, I'm a little disappointed. I mean, for a series that has Hercules in almost every entry, it would have been hilarious if this is the first Zeus that we meet. In the one game that doesn't have Olympus! After making it through the city, Sam leaves Riku alone to go talk to the unnamed Zeus. While he's waiting... Glad I get to fight more than boredom. Damn, Riku with the snappy one-liners. Afterwards, Riku catches up with Sam. Sam! <laughs> Was Sam just gonna leave Riku behind? Dick. Regardless, they all need to hop a solar sailor to reach the portal. While Flynn is patching up Korra here, he explains how he created Clue to try to achieve perfection in the grid. Riku then draws some interesting parallels between Flynn and Xehanort, how the two men's single-minded search for answers negatively affected the world around them. I always appreciate it when the Disney worlds have a little deeper thematic connection to the overall story. Unfortunately, Clue hijacks the train and takes our heroes to his ship. Once there, Korra decides to serve as a distraction so the boys can make it to the portal. However, there's another problem. Earlier, Clue stole Flynn's identity disc, which has the power to let them leave the grid as well. So, Sam and Riku go on a little detour to save Korra and get the disc back. What are you doing here? To the flight deck. But Clue will be here any minute. We'll never make it. Don't worry. Riku's here to help. Okay, 
I know these games have always essentially been Disney fan fiction, but that line felt particularly self inserty Anyway, our heroes commandeer a jet to finally make it to the portal. Weird note about this location, aside from this one story instance and the save point, there's actually no way to get to this place. Or leave it. So, somehow, Clue manages to beat them there and almost immediately sticks the Mantis Dream Eater on them. This fight is... interesting. The big double-edged sword is the edge of the arena. You can use it to flow motion off of to get those sweet attacks in, but on the other hand, it is very easy to accidentally do so. I created the perfect system! Wow, he is so broken up about his monster. Anyway, Flynn manages to distract Clue long enough for the others to make it to the actual portal. Dad! Sam! It's time! No! Sam, it's what he wants. I'm not leaving you! Take her! Okay, so, I have stated before on the show my desire for the series to use more music from the Disney movies. This isn't about musicals this time! Actually, it's about the score. While I adore the original music for these games, Destiny's Union here just doesn't have the same impact as the track Flynn Lives from the movie. And to illustrate my point, check out this little monetization killer I threw together. Dad! Sam! It's time! No! Sam, it's what he wants. I'm not leaving you! Take her! Goodbye, kiddo. Anyway, Flynn sacrifices himself to stop Clue, Sam and Cora escape, and Riku finds his keyhole. Meanwhile, back at Yen Sid's, Mickey and the gang receive a message from Maleficent calling them back to Disney Castle, as she's clearly got Queen Minnie as a hostage. As Mickey, Donald, and Goofy rush off to save her, Yen Sid is concerned about the timing of this attack. So that was the grid. Pretty darn good. For a Sora side, at least. I love the connection to KH2, as well as building off the whole Rinsler Tron thing that was barely in the movie. Though, speaking of the movie plot, even for KH, Riku felt really shoehorned into it for his side. But at least the world itself looks good, as all Tron things tend to. Well, that's it for this episode. Tune in next time as we return to town. <laughs>